Hey, what's up guys? And uh, today on this little video, I just put it together. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to fish the Providence River. So um, I just put, you know, some tackle out and I'm gonna just go over what I use it's, because it's so simple. You know, I just put it together in a little five minute video for you guys to watch if you're interested about catching fish on the Providence River. And um, first off, I'm just gonna start off with what rods I use, my tackle. Um, I have one light rod and then one heavier rod. And I'll first go over the, the lighter rod. My light rod is a uh, Cabela's Pro Guide, just spinning, uh, spinning rod, which is a uh, light, light, uh, light power, fast action, um, you know, only four to eight pound test, um, you know, line and about, you know, lower weight, one, the one sixteenth to a uh, quarter ounce. And uh, this rod is a really nice rod for, you know, I use this a lot of times, you know, in the winter time and then early spring when you're throwing a lot of uh, smaller stuff, which I'll get into. And, um, you know, cause a lot of times in the winter time, you're throwing a lot of small stuff that just right along the bottom, you know, you don't need anything heavy. This actually was a freshwater setup that I have. I use it in the spring for, you know, spawning largemouth when I'm throwing real small stuff on the beds actually. And then, um, then it just I'm just using a simple uh, cross uh, dial crossfire uh, spinning reel with uh, five three one gear ratio and ten pound test power pro. And <clears throat> you can really you know you can like a good thing about this rod too is it's it's light. You can get you can get a really far cast with it with like really light um, small stuff. So you can cover a lot of territory. And uh, you can still see all the a lot of scales on here. I've caught so many fish with this little rod. You know, I've caught them up to about 30, 32 inches with this little rod. So, yeah, that's a that's a fish catcher right there. Then um, my next rod, this is my, my heavier spinning rod that I, I start fishing the river with in the fall. And then, you know, as like the spring goes on, I'll start fishing all the way up into May when once the fish are a little more aggressive. Um, this is just a, um, a Shimano Claris graphite uh, spinning rod. And uh, yeah, it's my heavy setup, fast uh, fast action, medium heavy power, um, and then lure weight is quarter to three quarters of an ounce. So yeah, I'm usually throwing my bigger swim baits with this, or you know, my bigger jerk baits with um, heavier you know heavier jigs, and um, especially if I'm fishing deeper water. But you know, also if I'm fishing, I'm fishing those bigger baits when those stripers are more aggressive and they're going to eat them. Um, then I have just this uh, Quantum Optics 40. Uh, 5 to 1 gear ratio spinning reel real nice simple reel you know uh, it's a cheap reel the rod this rod is a little bit more on you know on the higher end of the market but this is a cheap reel uh, that's why I got it you know I don't you don't need anything fancy to fish the Providence River um, you know you can probably go to Walmart get a Walmart special and be set pretty much um, I always you know and then I have 20 pound test power pro on this and um, yeah I always fish power pro you just get a better hook set um, you know and these two setups that I just showed you could be perfect on the river. So, all right, now I'm going to talk to you about my, um, my my baits, you know, my leader material and stuff like that, my jigs, and that's pretty much about it. So, uh, I usually fit fish with, you know, a total of uh, four baits. Um, I would say in the winter time, you know, and early spring, I'll be I'll be throwing like an Easy Shiner, four inch Easy Shiner Kitek swim bait. I like sexy shad, you know, these are four inches, like these baits are perfect little, 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 little bites that like when those stripers are sitting real lethargically on the bottom of the bottom of the river, <clears throat> you just bring this by their, by their nose and they're just going to eat it. You know, I've caught so many fish on fish with these and, um, a lot of videos, you know, I'm pretty much, I'm using this and, uh, throughout the winter and, um, you know, early spring that, that always catches fish. Um, usually I rig it on a, uh, I got a bunch of different jig heads here with uh, just lead round head jig heads with um, owner hooks or Gamagatsu hooks. You know, these hooks are, you know, a real, like real, real, they're strong enough for the fish when they're not, when they're not as aggressive, like in the, in the fall or in, you know, the springtime. They're perfect for um, when the fish are a little bit more lethargic in, um, in the uh, the winter time early spring you know late fall when the water's real cold because uh you know they, they i've caught fish on these with in the fall and if it's a big enough fish like a keeper he'll straighten the hook you know or he maybe not completely straighten it but you you can lose them and he'll straighten it pretty good um if i'll get into my other jigs what i use um with heavier hooks what, what i use but um other than that so 
Kitek Easy Shiner. I fish that in the winter time a lot and um, early spring. And then <clears throat> another bait that catches a ton of fish is just this little tiny finesse shad. Uh, I, I believe it's uh, three and a quarter inches. Um, same thing. I just rig it on a um, you know one of these jig heads. I usually I fish. I'm fishing these jig heads one sixteenths. You know one one eighth of an ounce um, up to a quarter ounce um, in the winter time, depending on how much wind and how much current you have. You know, and I just stripers just love this on the Providence server. Just a little bait like that. It's like a little morsel and. You, know, you just pull it all, you, like sometimes I'll just drag this along the bottom, kind of, you know, pulling it along like this. And then all of a sudden you feel that weight, you set the hook and you got a fish on. You know, you really don't even have to, um, you know, jig it above the bottom, you know. I try to do that sometimes because there's a lot of junk in the Providence River that you can snag on and stuff, so. So, you know, you, sometimes, you know, you got to know your area if you, you know, some areas you break off a lot of lures. But, uh, yeah, so these two baits, Lunker City uh, Finesse Shads and, um, Kitek Easy Shiners, those are two phenomenal baits. And then I'm just gonna get into um, <clears throat> these other two baits that I fish mainly through the fall and then into spring once the, once the fish start feeding on bigger stuff and they're more aggressive. And, um, and that is the uh, Powerbait um, Berkeley uh, Flatback Shad. It's a phenomenal bait, especially to fish at night. And then uh, also the, uh, the Cream Soft Jerk Bait which is uh, very similar to the Zoom um, soft jerk bait, but uh, cream I find just has a little bit thinner profile and you know floats down in the water column, column a little bit different. Um, you know, it's a pretty nice bait. You know, you, a bunch of colors work. Um, this is pearl. I love I love using pearl, um, but um, there's a few other colors. That, you know, bait fish colors that work very well. I use this a lot just because the water in the Providence River can be a lot real dirty at sometimes. At some points in the year um, and it's just you know I feel like the fish can see this really well and uh, a lot of times I don't even when I'm fishing this you don't even have to jerk it that much usually I, if I know where the fish are I cast out to it just as soon as it hits, hits the water I just jiggle it in that area as it slowly flutters down and that's when they just eat it so um, and usually I'm rigging this on a uh, you know I'm rigging this on like a 3 8 ounce Kalen um, jig with uh, Gamagatsu hooks you see that head like that right there, and uh, you know I, I fish. I also go up to quarter ounce with this, um, or half ounce, half ounce actually with this, quarter and uh, quarter three eighths and half ounce, and um, just like that. That's a perfect little bait. Stripers love it. I would say this is probably like one of the top baits, and if you're walking along the river, you're gonna see guys throwing this. Like no doubt, I, probably 90% of the time guys are throwing this. Um, I'm probably one of those guys that I like to fish different things. Like I'll, I'll throw the Kitex and the uh, Finesse Shads and cause you know, I like to change it up and I, I find what the fish feed on differently. So um, yeah, the um, Cream Soft Jerk Bait. And then let me get, let me talk to you real quick about the um, Berkeley uh, Flatback Shad. This bait is phenomenal. Smells amazing, like the, the stripers just annihilate it. Um, I usually, when I'm fishing that, I'll be fishing it on a a bullet head uh, jig head, you know, by Kalins, either um, half or uh, three quarters of an ounce. And um, I'm usually fishing this a lot of times at night because of that paddle tail, like they can feel it very well at night. So usually I'll be fishing the cream jerk bait and into dark or something, and then I'll switch over and I'll start throwing this. And usually fishing this, you just cast your, you know, your desired location, reel, you know, give it a reel it slowly, stop reeling, drop the rod tip, jig up, and then continue reeling again. And that's pretty much what it does is it, you know, has it going along, you stop it, it flutters down, and then you jig it up like that. And that also is good because then it um, helps you maintain uh, bottom contact. So, and a lot of times, all the fish, it's, it's kind of like clockwork. All these fish, when you're fishing the swim bait, they hit it on the fall. You know, most of the fish hit it on the fall, and um, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I don't know why they just love it when it goes down like this. But um, yeah, so th those are those are pretty much all my baits. Uh, now I'm just gonna get like talking about line real quick. Um, fishing line, I always fish with fluorocarbon. That's just personal preference. There's a lot of crap down there, and I like I find the fluorocarbon doesn't shape as e um, easily. But um, when I'm fishing. Um, <clears throat> You know, my lighter rod, 
the uh, the Cabela's um, pro pro guide uh, pro guide spinning rod. I'll, I'll be fishing like throughout the winter and early spring. I'll be fishing eight pound to twelve pound test seaguar fluorocarbon, and that's pretty much all you know all I'll be using. Um, a lot of people say, oh, eight pounds pretty light, but no, nah, these fish are lethargic. Eight pound is completely fine. Um, you, know, you just gotta you just gotta you know, you know work them in you know and and it's not they don't even fight hard. They fight good, but they don't fight that hard in in the winter time. Um, it's kind of just cool to catch them, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of other fish that fight harder, you know, probably a, a pike or something out of, you know, through the ice fights a lot harder than these striped bass. But um, <clears throat> then um, if I'm fishing my bigger uh, Shimano Claris uh, spinning rod, I'll be, go I'll be throwing uh, 15 and uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon, uh, Seaguar fluorocarbon. Um, I just find that the fluorocarbon works very well. Um, also fluorocarbon sinks. And uh, I noticed that when you're fishing the, the jerk baits um, and you're fishing with monofilament, the monofilament floats and it actually keeps the bait, you know, on a weird angle and prevents it from prevents it from sinking, kind of on, you know, in a normal um, in a normal natural way. It just, it just doesn't it doesn't sink normal because the the mono creed has a, has a bow like this, so it sinks like this. Where with the fluorocarbon it goes straight to wherever your your rod tip is and it just sinks straight like this. Where mono it sinks like this, fluorocarbon it sinks like that. So uh, I just find um, you know fluorocarbon works a lot better. And uh, yeah, that should be all. That should be it. Um, I'm just gonna show you one last thing that if you're gonna be fishing the river, I would recommend. Uh, and that's my bridge net. If you've seen in my videos, you know me using a little bridge net like this. Uh, I'm fishing a lot of light, like lighter tackle than most guys do in the river. A lot of guys, when they fish the river, they can just lift the fish up, you know, and, you know, I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon or power pro. I can just lift the fish up too. That's a pain in the neck. You know, you gotta wrap it around your hands and pull them up. I just, what I'll do is if I'm fishing off the bridge, I'll just tie this rope to the top of the railing and have this dangling down there because there's not really many boats that are driving back and forth. And, uh, and then I'll just, you know, as soon as I catch a fish, pull in the net, pull the net, pull the net up you know, and throw the fish overboard, you know, back, back over the bridge. The bridge isn't a high bridge, so you're not really gonna kill them on the fall. Um, but um, yeah, this net actually is a frayable fishing net. And all I did is I went to Home Depot, bought this rope, which was, I think I got like a hundred feet for like, like six bucks. So it was completely worth it. And then I bought the, this metal O-ring, which was about, I don't know, I think it was for two, it was like two bucks or something. So, uh, but actually you can see this was for the, uh, the handle. So like I said, you can actually save money. Go to Bass Pro, go to Cabela's, <clears throat> buy a frayable fishing net, you know, just take this out. And this is, you know, the pole. And, um, you know, and then buy some rope from Home Depot, buy an O-ring, and then you have a bridge net just like that. You know, and what I like about this bridge net also is it's like a smaller bridge net. You know, I'm not catching, I'm not fishing like an ocean bridge, like back down in Jersey where I usually fish. And, you know, you're not, you're not fishing 100 feet in the air and you're pulling up, uh, you know, fish that are going, you know, from 30, 30 inches keepers to, you know, around, uh, you know, 30 pounds. Like that's, uh, those, those are a lot bigger fish. If I was catching those kind of fish, I'd have a bigger net, but you know, most of the fish are going to be catching them between, you know, 10 inches and, you know, keeper size. You know, you might get lucky and get one that's like over keeper, you know, 35 inches if you're lucky. Um, I think I, I've actually never caught one out of the river that was 35 inches. I think my biggest one out of the river has been like 32 inches or something, but, um, yeah, all right. So I hope this helps you out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. You know, if you know somebody's gonna be fishing the river, you know, share it to them. Um, share the video with them. You know, hope, like it. Um, leave any comments below if you got any questions. Um, you know, you know, follow me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, you know, I'm always posting on Instagram, and I'm start. I'm gonna start posting more on Facebook, kind of like up to date. But um, yeah, a lot of guys were giving me questions. Yeah, I don't mind answering them. So just you know, give me a shout. You know. So uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you out in the water sometime. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching.